Uh, thanks for uh, coming today to see my talk. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, HappyJS. Um, who of you are like familiar with Node.js uh, Express? Or has any of you used Happy? No. OK, so <laughs> you come to the right place because it's more like an intro to HappyJS and comparing it a little bit to like, Express. Um, to give a bit of a background, HappyJS was developed in-house at Walmart Labs. Um, it was, their goal was to use it for Walmart uh, mobile. So initially they tried using Express, but with, uh, they come up to like, a lot of roadblocks using it in a big team. Things like uh, keep, trying to keep the code structured, um, de dependencies where one team would implement a feature using certain dependencies, and when they went to integrate it, like, the dependencies were like, in the wrong order and stuff. Um, so they initially used it as a reverse proxy for their existing Java backend. And then bit by bit, they would replace endpoints with a Node.js implementation. Um, and then I think it was 2013, uh, it, they basically completely replaced their Java backend and it ran all of their Black Friday sales through the mobile app. Um, and I think Walmart invested over $2 million into this framework. Today it's been split off into its own company and it's like mostly led by Ivan Hammer who no longer works at Walmart. He's taken uh, happy at JS on full time. Uh, now, there's many companies out there already using the Happy. Some of the big names are on this slide. Uh, in particular, NPM uses it for their whole entire website. Uh, Walmart, like I said, are using it for all their mobile endpoints and, and views. Uh, Macy's, OpenTable, PayPal, Beats, who are going to close down shortly. <laughs> But they're all using it to some extent. Some of them are using it in production. Some of them are using it in like, internal systems. Uh, so I guess I'll start with like, a Hello World example. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to do is you need the NPM install happy. Uh, if you go to the internet, open up your web browser, and go to happyjs.com, <laughs> on their front page, it will tell you the npm install command you need to run. It's pretty simple. Uh, so once you've installed happy.js, you'll need to uh, import it into your JavaScript file. So and then once imported, you'll need to create like a server instance. So let's call in uh, new happy server, like so. And then the next thing you'd have to do is we need to bind the server instance to, like a, to a host and a port. Um, Happy does actually allow you to use, like associate multiple connections to one server instance, and then you can serve different sets of functionality to different connections if you wish. But for this Hello World, I'm just going to set up one connection, which is uh, to my local host, uh, port 5000. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, don't hesitate to interrupt me while I'm walking through this. Um, the next thing we need to do is set up a route for our like, Hello World example. You know, it's like set up a route you call uh, the root method and passing in a, um, a JavaScript object. There's three things required as a method. So that would be uh, like a get or a post. You need a path, which I'm going to set up at the root of the application for now. And you need a handler function. And the two arguments for that, one being the request and one being a reply object. And we can respond by calling the reply object and 
pass in a string that says hello world. Uh, at the end, of, the end to start the app, we just need to call server.start. And then you can uh, put in a function there. Uh, I'm just going to put like server started. So if I call, oh yeah, I need to save it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put index.js. So in, in the command line, we can just do node index. And for my REST client, I can just call the method here, and it should respond to hello world. So that's like an initial hello world example. Which I put in the slides. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about why I think Happy is awesome, and like why I think it's better than Express. <laughs> Uh, first of all, it's like extensibility is a key uh, factor in why I think it's awesome. Everything in Happy is a plugin. So you can write your app in a modular fashion where each component is, is in its own like, file or module. And every module has the same like, uh, uh, signature. So, to, so you can easily swap modules in and out of different Happy applications. Yeah. Uh, and it also allows you to define dependencies between modules. So if you have like a, like a shopping cart website, you have a, a module for users that has all the routes for creating accounts and logging in. And then you have a, a module for the shopping cart. You could have the shopping cart specify that it relies on a module called users. And at runtime, if, if they've not been um, registered to in the, in the server instance, in the correct order, it will uh, let you know, so you don't run into like like uh, weird situations where like one team merges in a feature and then it stops, like doesn't quite work because other teams have made other changes, that, so forth. Um, <clears throat> so I will like do another code sample where I pull out this Hello World into its own like plugin. So I create a new file, and I'll pull this piece of code out. Um, so every plugin is basically a method that takes a server instance, an options object, and a next callback. Everyone can see this OK, yeah? In there, I'll paste in our root. And the important thing to do is to make sure that once you've finished doing things with the server instance that you call the next method. And then we can export this, like so. And Happy, Happy also expects that each function has an attribute called attributes. And on here, you give your, your uh, plugin like a name. So here, I call it Hello World. Ooh, I can't even spell. This saved my life. So the, the name is really important for when you have other modules that depend on this one. That's the name that we used to say, I depend on this module. So now, if I go back to the index, I can create an array called plugins. And in there, I will require uh, my hello world that I didn't name correctly. So in there, I will require my hello world plugin. And then before we call server.start, we need to Called server dot register. Pass our plugins into there, and again as a we'll callback, which I move the start method into. So the start will be called after all the plugins have fit, finished being registered. Uh, you could also add 
an if statement to handle whether there's an error in the plugin. Like so. So I go to restart my app, and if, if it's successful, I should get the same response here. There you go. So as part of my plugin, the most important thing is the signature, the signature of the method is always the same for every plugin in Happy. Uh, I think my slide deck. Ooh. Minimum viable plugin, which is I kind of just demonstrated. So the other, some other things you can do in your uh, routes. Just like in, in, uh, in Express, you can inspect the request object. So we could do um, var name equals uh, request.query.name. This. And now, if I add to my query string, uh, yeah, the name attribute of uh, Simon. We now get hello Simon. So it's like basically the basics of how uh, parameters get passed in. Now, another cool thing we could do uh, with with this uh, a plugin is we could change it so that when we go to register the plugin, we pass in some options. Uh, bonjour. <laughs> so in, in your plugin, it gets passed in as an objects, uh, sorry, an options object there. And this, this really helps uh, to make the plugin much more reusable. So then in, in different projects, they can pass in different options. So now, when I call it, it's Bonjour Simon. Um, so basically, I've got some code samples, which I just walked you through. So basically, everything in Happy JS is a plugin. The authentication plugin, sorry, it has plugins for authentication, for file and directory serving, for like templating, uh, login, and caching, and many more things. Um, and there's many third-party plugins out there too. And some particular places you can go looking for them on the happyjs.com website. Uh, So on the website, at the top of the page, you have a menu for plugins. And it's like a whole directory of different kinds of plugins. But they all have, basically all can be registered the exact same way as the plugin I just showed you. Um, <clears throat> so another cool thing in HappyJS is validation. Uh, Validation is built right into the framework, and it uses uh, a library called Joy, like so. So you would define a schema, like in this code sample, so if you, uh, I'm going to create like a new, a new plugin, and I'll show you how the, the validation works. So I'm going to create a, a plugin, like a pets endpoint, so you can like post your dog or your cat to it. <laughs> uh, 
First of all, I'm, I'm going to require the Joy uh, library. And I'm going to create like a schema object called pet. And basically, on my pet object, I'm going to give it a name attribute, which is a string. Um, I'm going to make it required. Age, which is a number. I'm not going to make that required. So basically, that's like a very basic uh, validation schema. And then I'm going to create a root for these. So uh, I'm going to make it a post method. So here in my handler, I'm just going to return like a payload uh, attribute from the request. So the payload is a, whatever you post in the body of your request. So in this case, I'm going to be posting a, a JavaScript object that has a name and an age attribute to the endpoint. And then I should get that exact same object back. Uh, so I call next. And then I just give us a name. And then I would register that in my app as, an, as a new plugin. So when I'm going to test this, uh, here I can add my, this is like my pet. So if I just try that, I'll just get back an empty object. Now, if I, in my uh, root that I created, if I add this uh, schema, my scheme object to the root, under uh, a config attribute. So here I'm saying that I want to use the schema to validate the payload. So now when I post the endpoint, luckily, or hopefully, I get an error back. And it will say here uh, why my request failed. Here it says name is required. So name, uh, my dog is called Curtis. Oh, look, and it wasn't even valid JSON. Yes, thank you. <laughs> ah, fourth time lucky. <laughs> so validation is something that's actually built into the framework, unlike in Express, where you would have to bring in a, a third party dependency. Now, the, another cool thing in Happy, I think, is uh, I think it's under either the. Actually, I'm going to create a new endpoint. So, in this case, just a demo one thing. If I had like 
I'm going to just hard code in a pet to return in a get request. And in this case, I just uh, dub age two. You know, I go to my client and go to pets one. I get back this dog called Doug, who's age two. Now you can add um, this pet schema. I think it's under. under a response attribute rather than a validate attribute. And if I've got this correct, it will raise an uh, internal server error. So I think I put it in the right place. So basically, I don't think it's going to show you the error message here. But basically, what I'm doing in, in this case is a feature of HappyJS is that you can validate the response you're sending back to the client. And this is to ensure that you are conforming to the contract that you have with your client. And you can add like a, a second attribute called sample, where I think if you set it to zero, it will lay it through. So basically, you can set this is like a percentage. So you can set this to 100%. Basically, at 100 requests out of 100, it will always validate the response. And if you set to zero, it, will, it won't validate. So you can basically uh, tone this down to, like, say, only one out of 10 requests get validated so that less processing time is used, utilized in the requests. Um, if you're like unit test, if you're unit testing your server, you'd probably want to set that to like a hundred. So, uh. <clears throat> so I think in my next slides, I kind of show hit request validation there and like validating responses. Uh. There's one thing I haven't actually got in my slides. And uh, basically, there are some libraries out there where you can also reuse that, that same validation schema as like your Mongo schema. So there is a library uh, called Happy like, Mongo Models. And basically, it acts. It, it's very similar to mongoose, but much more lightweight. And instead of using like a mongoose schema object, you'd use your like a joy schema object. So basically, the persistence layer and the, the API are using the exact same validation schema. <clears throat> so the next thing that I think is pretty cool in HappyJS is authentication. Now, like, usually in Express, uh, most people go with Passport.js. Now, an issue I've seen with Passport.js quite often is like, a lot of people say we'll write, write a Passport LDAP plugin. But usually, they always make the assumption that it always comes from like a username and password field. It's, it's like, and the, my one, like, main complaint is there's really two concerns. Really, you need to abstract what you're authenticating with away from how the using, uh, authentication token or username is coming through from the HTTP request. Um, so a lot of the authentication plugins in HappyJS are built, like, built with that in mind. There's these things called authentication like, uh, scheme plugins, ones for basic authentication digest, authentication bearer token or cookie, or header authentication. Um, and none of them provide like a, a way of like authenticating against Passport or any other backend system. It's up to you to implement that, your, implement that yourself. Um, so if I wanted to like put authentication on my pet endpoint, 
I would first of all have to register a plugin for a basic authentication, say. I've installed one called Pappy Auth Basic. And I've got a code snippet here somewhere. So you are, ex you are expected to basically implement a validation function. Which would connect to your database or your LDAP server. Um, and then you would pass it in in a piece of code like this. So basically it's calling a strategy method. You're passing in uh, what you're going to call the strategy. So I'm just calling this simple authentication. And it's using the basic like uh, plugin, the basic authentication plugin. Um, it's, pretty, it's going to be pretty simple. I just need to supply a password called root. <laughs> uh, so to use that on my pet root, I would need to pass in here off simple. So now when I go to, oh yeah, I should probably add a name. I did something wrong. Comma. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. So what I need to do, I, had, I didn't register my auth plugin. So after registering the basic strategy, I also need to register the part, the file that basically integrates it with my back end. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> it's always coming. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so basically, like it, we're returning our 401 saying missing authentication. Um, and now I've authenticated my with my pet endpoint. <laughs> so that coming back to uh, what is good about that. Is really the separation, the, two, the separation of the two concerns: the how the the authentication tokens are passed through to the API away from what it's actually authenticating against. Um, so another cool thing about Happy JS is kind of related to like documentation or like meta programming. Every each route that's registered with the server, you can actually like inspect dynamically at runtime. So that's quite useful to generate, like you could, you could generate like self doc, like self generating documentation is one thing you can use it for. And there's a plugin called Lout, which is like a first party documentation plugin. But there are like third party document plugins that generate like swagger uh, documentation. So if I go to use the, I've already installed it out. And I think by, by default, uh, it adds like a docs endpoint. Oh. That's, you know, that's not, this app's another app. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> uh, maybe I've got the endpoint incorrect. Well, actually, maybe I should check. Uh, 
it usually it defaults to docs. So I don't know why it's not why it's not working. So let's save it. <laughs> it's not a comma this time. <laughs> so I'll, I'll move on and I'll come back to the documentation in a bit. Uh, this same functionality that allows you to like, self-generate the documentation is useful for other things. Um, I've written like a plugin called Happy IO, which allow, which basically hooks Socket IO up into Happy. And at runtime, when a when a user sends like a Socket IO event or message, it will take the contents of that message and then map it to a Happy root, and then. It'll, it will basically like uh, Happy will then like uh, handle it like a regular HTTP request and then provide a response back for Socket IO, uh, which I'll also show in a bit later. And um, the cool thing with Happy JS is actually how it handles exceptions. It uses uh, Node.js domains, which allows it to handle like, unhandled exceptions in asynchronous code. And is so I have this Express app. So this is one thing that Express like kind of suffers struggles with. So this is like basically like a Hello World Express app. Um, so if I run this app. I get back like hello world. But then if I if I put it in a timeout, so it's now I'm gonna run the response basically asynchronously. You can see it's still it's still working. But the moment we have a piece of code in here, say like I try to call a method on now. The server will basically just crash. I express will crash. Whereas if I did the same thing in my happy app, so I go to my hello world example, and say I take this and I put that in a timeout function so it's run asynchronously. What am I doing? <laughs> I think that's right. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Somehow I've messed up my happy app. Yeah, I messed up somehow. What I'll do is I'll like, take some of the plugins out. I don't know why it's complaining about authentication because I just removed all of those plugins. Oh, there. So now like, my Hello World is working again. And if I was to throw an exception in my handler, like, just like the, the Express one,
Yep. <laughs> I will actually get a 500 error back, and the server won't crash, uh, which is pretty useful. Like, obviously, with, exp with an express app, you could have like a process monitor that restarts the app, but it's always at st like startup time where you have to reinitialize database connections and initialize models if you're using an IOM and stuff. Whereas HappyJS will gracefully handle the 500 error for you. Um, so if HappyJS uses a library called Boom to represent the different HTTP error um, codes, which is kind of handy if you want to override uh, the behavior for a 500 error. So like what we got back is the standard uh, error response. So to, over, like, to override what we get back, um, We have a snippet of code here where you, every request in HappyJS passes through like a pipeline. So you've got like pre-validation, post-validation, pre-handler before it goes into your handler and so forth. There's an event called on pre-response where if you, you hook into that, you can then inspect the, the object being passed, returned to the client. You can check whether it's a, like a boom object. And if so, you can then like override the default behavior there. Um, so another cool thing in HappyJS is, is testing. Um, there's two libraries for testing Happy. They had they tried they originally tried using like Mocha or some other testing frameworks, but none of them supported Node.js domains. So they ended up resorting to writing their own like test runner and their own like assertions library. Um, so like to run a test, you have to you have to create like a folder called tests, I think, or test. I've got some boiler boilerplate here for running tests. Now, what I need to quickly do is add a file called server.js. And in here, I will take all the code from my index. But instead of starting the app, I'll uh, basically I export the server instance rather than starting it. And in, in my index app, I will uh, require like, the, the server file. Mm. It's not quite perfect. Yeah, this isn't going to be quite perfect. Because it's kind of async. We'll see if it works. So if I go to Yeah, it still kind of works. So, so now I've like separated the server object out into its own file. I can then, in my tests, I can require the server object. Uh, and then I can basically, without I can run a test without using the network stack. So I can create like an object to represent a request. Uh, the method is get um, path to my hello world. And then I think it's kind of like this. 
So you can pass in like query string parameters. I think this is how it works. Add the And then we could like assert or expect, say, uh, res status code. Uh, yeah, so to do, <laughs> if I can remember this correctly, I think it's, yeah, I can't remember the command, but basically that's what, how you <laughs> like test like, the server method. Basically the server has an inject method where you can pass in like a dummy request, and then in the callback you can assert the results from the server. So that's like bypassing the whole network layer. Like, the network has, the framework's been abstracted away from the network layer. Um, <clears throat> and that's pretty, also pretty useful for other cases too. There's a plugin called Basemaster, which allows you to do batch requests. So basically you can uh, send a get or post request to like a batch endpoint of like a list of URLs and payloads, and then it will inject each of those using the server.inject method and provide you like a response back with all the like several responses in one pay, in one request. Uh, then coming back to my happy IO plugin, I use the same functionality to uh, basically pass a socket IO event into happy as though it, like as a fake request, so as though it's a request. And that allows you to use the same endpoint code for your real-time events as well as your API. Um, so in summary, like, the cool thing about HappyJS is very extendable and modules are written as plugins. You can basically write a whole app in that way. It has both input and output validation and you can reuse that validation library in your own domain code or in your own like, ORMs or database code. Um, authentication, like I said, is the concerns have been separated into two distinct parts. Um, the fact that you can like, inspect how your routes have been set up is great for auto-generating documentation and the error handling, the unhandled acceptance is really good. Um, so some resources if you want to look up more, look into HappyJS more, is the HappyJS website is a good starting place and on there they have like, the documentation for all the, like, the API calls on server object and request object and so forth. Um, they have a whole like uh, Happy JS GitHub organization. Under there are lots of plugins, as well as the main repository for the project. Um, there's one particular project you might want to look at called Make Me Happy. So what that is is from a command line, uh, if you call Make uh, Me Happy, it's basically like a set of like like tutorials that you can do from the command line or from your text editor. If you pick one of those, it will have a tutorial for you to work through. Uh, so uh, the example app, uh, there were some example apps, is the NPM like, website, which is open source. That's all powered via HappyJS. There's also an app called Colonizers, which is a Catan game. Has anyone played Catan? Some people. So there's an app that I wrote which is like a multiplayer turn based game that's based on Happy JS. And it uses like Happy IO to facilitate using Socket IO and API uh, endpoints. Uh, I think I've actually got that loaded. So here, like, if you go to join a game, It works. Yeah, here we go. It's kind of like slow to load at the moment because there's like a lot of assets it loads. It crashed. Oh, there you go. I thought it crashed. 
one moment. <laughs> but it's like a, a multiplayer game. Uh, yeah, it's still, it's still kind of buggy. But I to come back to the self document at the self documentation. This is the one that, that you saw earlier where all my endpoints have been documented. And it tells you what, what like authentication is required and what what all the parameters are that are expected in your payload. So these are all attributes that you can, like I say, inspect at runtime and you can use it however you want, not just for documentation. Um, so yeah, you can you can take a look at how I've written this uh, Catan game. And that's everything. Thank you. Is there... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.